Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is why is defrost needed in a heat pump and what exactly is happening. So we're going to be going over what initiates defrost and what terminates defrost. So what happens is this outdoor fan gets turned off, the reversing valve changes the directional flow of the refrigerant, and this control board sends 24 volts to the indoor air handler for the electric strip heating to turn on. Now, why does this defrost board need to do this? And the reason is these fins out here are going to accumulate frost or maybe even ice buildup on the fins, which is going to stop the heat transfer. Remember that a heat pump running in the middle of winter, what's happening is the refrigerant traveling through the fins is trying to absorb heat from the low temperature air. So if the air is 30 degrees outside, that means that the refrigerant is at a lower temperature than the air surrounding the fins in order for this heat pump to absorb heat. So there's two things that initiate defrost and one is a cumulative timer right here. So it's 30, 60 or 90 minutes of cumulative runtime. So what that means is if you set this at 60 minutes and this unit turned on for 20 minutes, shut off, turned on for another 20 minutes, shut off and then turned on for another say 21 minutes at the end of that run cycle, it's going to look to see if the connection over here at the DFT is closed. So the DFT is the defrost temperature sensor. And if the temperature on the coil where this is mounted is below the, the temperature rating here, which a lot of times is 30 or 32 degrees, this will then be closed and that will initiate defrost for this control board. Now that's for this version of defrost control boards. Some control boards have a DFT and an outdoor ambient temp sensor. The outdoor ambient temp sensor is there instead of this cumulative run timer. Now I want to tell you a little more about this defrost temperature sensor. This DFT sensor will open on a temperature rise and then it will close on a temperature fall. So on this particular unit, it's actually stamped right here and I'll take you up for up close image, but this one is 80 minus 50 degrees. So that means it's going to close. So 80 minus 50 is 30 degrees. So it will close once the, the coil temperature gets below 30 degrees. And then it, this is not going to open up the electrical connection again inside, which acts like a switch. It's not going to open that up again until it gets up to 80 degrees. And if this coil gets to 80 degrees, then, then basically the system knows that, that the fins are fully defrosted. So that's this one. There's another one right here. I'm going to show you, and that one is 65 minus 33. So that will close at 32 degrees and will open back up at 65 degrees. And that's because 65 minus 33 is 32 degrees. Now, as far as the time timing mechanism, what's actually happening here is you have 24 volts at the Y terminal. It jumps over to this Y terminal right here, and this wire goes through the, the temperature limit switches and the pressure limit switches. And then what happens is it comes back on T1. So it comes to T1 as well as to the side of the contactor down here. So it does that, and you can see this is actually the junction down here. It actually comes back onto the contactor and then finds its way up to the T1. But anytime you have power on T1, that's how the, the timer counts. So if a pressure switch is, is open or something like that, like the thermal limit is open or a pressure switch is open, then the whole system is not going to be running. So the board's not going to count that time. So it's only going to count at any time it has 24 volts on the T1. Okay, now let's get into what's actually happening. So as you can see, I have three wires up here and these three wires attached to the outdoor unit fan up top. And if you follow these wires, there's one right here that goes to the capacitor. There's another one right here and that goes to one of the two power legs. And then you have this one right here. So this power leg is connected to this relay on the board. And you see that you have power coming to the relay right here. And when I say relay, I really mean these two wires are connected to the switch on the top of the relay. So the contact between here and here are normally closed, meaning that they're, they're usually touching. So the control board would have to power the coil on the bottom of the relay in order to open up this normally closed electrical connection between here and here. So what's going to happen is during defrost, it's going to shut off that outdoor unit fan. So basically it's going to be the same thing as me just pulling this wire just like this. It's going to shut that wire off. At the same time, what's going to happen is 
the reversing valve right here. So you see O and C. So this is leading to the reversing valve, the two orange wires right here. So what's going to happen is it's going to reverse the directional flow of the reversing valve and it's going to put it in air conditioning mode. And so if it puts it in air conditioning mode and the outdoor unit fan is not running, what's going to happen is there's going to be the discharge refrigerant gas on the outlet of the compressor is then going to be flowing through this coil. And we know that the, the discharge gas from the compressor is very, very hot. And so what it's doing is it's just going into this coil and it's rejecting the heat from the refrigerant into this coil and it's going to be melting all of the frost and ice. Now during defrost mode, this entire unit is basically running in air conditioning mode except without the outdoor unit fan running. Now to counteract this, because remember the thermostat's in heating mode, it's the middle of winter and you don't want to lower the temperature in the building, this defrost board during defrost is going to send a 24 volt signal to the indoor air handler via this white wire and it's going to power the sequencer or another relay at the indoor air handler in order to power the electric strip heaters. So those electric strip heaters are going to heat up the air after it crosses that indoor coil so that the building doesn't lower in temperature during defrost mode. So those are the three things that occur during defrost. You turn the power off to the outdoor unit fan you reverse the directional flow of the refrigerant via the reversing valve, and then you apply 24 volts to the indoor air handler for the emergency heat or the electric strip heat to turn on. So it's gonna run like that in defrost mode until a time increment of 10 minutes is met or the DFT sensor opens up the electrical circuit due to a high temperature on the outdoor coil. After which case, the unit's gonna turn back into heating mode again, so that means that the reversing valve is no longer going to be powered because this one's an O version. So it will be powered in defrost mode and, and during air conditioning mode. But during heating mode, this reversing valve is not going to be powered. This switch right here is going to close again. And we're no longer going to have 24 volts on the W. So the unit's going to be operating in normal heating mode. If you want to learn more about thermostat wiring, we have a bunch of wiring diagrams and thermostat quizzes over at the website over at acservicetech.com. And also make sure to check out our articles, quick tips, calculators, and the podcast. Make sure to also check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. And we have that full outline over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.